right, welcome back to the channel once again. Today we're gonna show you a quick, easy way to diagnose any sensor on your Ford vehicle that uses the five volt reference power and ground provided by the PCM. Now these sensors are special sensors to the PCM. They're critical sensors, okay? So they need to be accurate no matter what the operating conditions of the vehicle are and especially the operating voltage, okay? So think about when you start the vehicle up, maybe as low as nine, 10 volts, you get it running, it be as high as 15.5 volts. So that's really gonna affect the output of the sensor if the voltage coming into it keeps varying, okay? So the idea here is to provide a constant five volts to that sensor, a constant ground to the sensor that's monitored by the PCM, and therefore the output of that sensor should be true. Before we get into diagnosis, let's go over to the wiring diagram and we'll check it out and show you how simple these circuits are and how they're going to help us diagnose the circuit itself. Okay, so let's go over the wiring diagram real quick so you guys get a general sense of how these are wired into the PCM on here. Now this is for the fuel tank pressure sensor that we're showing you here today, but of course it applies to anything out there that uses this five volt reference and ground setup. There's gonna be a reference ground a reference voltage, and then a signal straight back to the PCM. So they're all set up the same way, and they have their individual pins on the PCM. Now, the way you look at a diagram like this, if you do have a diagram in front of you, is one side of this sensor is gonna be the reference ground. And on this particular one, it's this side right here. And the reason why you can tell that is because it's branching off, splitting off, splicing off to other critical sensors on the vehicle. And when it comes back to the PCM, you can see it's marked signal return. And what that means is it's not the signal returning back to it, it's actually the reference ground. So you can see this is coming directly from the PCM. So it's a regulated, monitored ground coming from the PCM, not from the body ground, not from the battery negative, it's coming from the PCM. This way it's nice and pure coming into here for our ground. And then also on this side right here, we have our VREF voltage coming into it. This is five volts regulated by the PCM being sent directly to that sensor so it has a good ground and a good voltage constant voltage so the output on it is pure and true. Now right here you can see just like a variable resistor this is a fuel tank pressure sensor so it does vary coming out of here and this is the signal coming out. So you can see the signal comes out here right in the center and it goes over to the PCM fuel tank pressure sensor input. It's a single line, nothing else is attached to it and that's how they get the pure signal coming from these sensors that are so critical to either EVAP monitoring or engine operation. So that just gives you a general idea and you can see how if we short the ground to the um, signal or if we short the VREF 5 volt to the signal going back, how we're going to be able to test all of these wires all at the same time and watch the PCM to make sure it reacts to it properly. So let's go over to the vehicle and get testing here. Now there's two different ways you can diagnose one of these sensors. You can either use a digital multimeter or a scan tool and watch the live data for that particular sensor. Now what I do is I use a combination of the multimeter and the scan tool so I get the most accurate result and diagnosis in the end for my customers. The idea here is the multimeter is able to test the voltage and the grounds and everything coming back to the actual point of entry into the sensor. And then with the scan tool, we can watch what the sensor is outputting. And not only that, we can also force it high and low with the same three circuits on here and make sure that the PCM reacts. And then we can also do a wiggle test. So we're watching live data on the scan tool. We can come along the harness here and the connectors all the way along, all the way up to the PCM and make sure there's no dropouts or spikes in the signal from a loose or corroded connection on there. So let's start off with the digital multimeter and then we'll go on to the scan tool. And depending on what you have, um, you can still get the job done. Okay, so first off, we'll start with the digital multimeter. We're gonna have it on DC voltage, and we're gonna take our ground or common lead and run it back to a good body ground or preferably the battery negative cable so we get a good ground source. And then we can take our positive lead, we're gonna use that for testing on here. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is have the key on, engine off, and then come over to the sensor that's in question that's giving you the problem or the DTC. We're gonna come over to it, we're gonna disconnect it, okay? 
And then we're gonna give it a quick visual to make sure no wires are broken on it because that happens a lot, believe it or not, at the point of entry into the connector shell here. And then of course you wanna check for corrosion. Now, the most basic sensor, like this fuel tank pressure sensor, is gonna have three lines coming into it. There's gonna be a reference voltage, a reference ground, and then a signal line back to the PCM. And that's how most of these sensors will be. It'll be only three pins on here, so it's very easy to diagnose. Now, which one of these is which on here? Well, who the heck knows? Unless you have a wiring diagram, you don't know. What I'm about to show you is a cool little trick you can use um, to figure out which is which on here accurately um, and know exactly what it is without a wiring diagram. So we got our, our multimeter all set up. We're disconnected, key on, engine off. Let's start doing some testing on here. Now, two of these pins on here is gonna have five volts at all times coming into it, and it's gonna be five volts. Not 4.2, not 4.5, not 4.56. It's gonna be right around five volts. Remember, this is a regulated voltage coming into here, so this sensor is ultra accurate in the end. So we're gonna have two lines that are gonna have five volts, and then one of them is gonna be a ground. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our positive lead on here of our multimeter. Again, key on engine off. We're gonna come down in here and we're just gonna touch the metal on there. See right there, 5.066, and it's constant, you see that? Now let's test the next one. We just gotta touch it a little bit, nothing. And then the next one on here, same thing, coming from the PCM. You can see it's a regulated voltage coming from the PCM. Now, the very first thing you want to do is figure out which one of these is which. We already know we have a connection back to the PCM, okay, as you can see there. What you can do is a small load test on here, and the five volt reference is gonna light up the test light just a little bit, okay? It'll be a slight glow to it, whereas the signal line back to the PCM that is also showing five volts will not light the test light. So let's go over and get the test light, and then we'll test those two to see which is which on there. And of course, load test the five volt reference coming in, and then we can move on to the reference ground. Now with the test light, there's a few things you have to know, okay? The output from the PCM, this five volt reference, is not gonna light up this test light night and nice and bright. It's gonna be a nice, soft glow to it. And the reason being is all these little sensors only use a little bit of current. Therefore, these are all low amperage, low current circuits inside the PCM. As long as it lights up, we know we're good to go. So again, the five volt reference is gonna light it up a little bit, and then the signal back that also is showing five volts will not, okay? so. Which is which on here? Well, we're gonna find out here real quick. Now, of course, the test light's going back to the negative on the battery cable. So you have a good ground, and then we're going to just touch the terminal. And you see how it's just lighting up just a little bit like that, slight glow? That's perfect, that's exactly what you want. And what that tells you is this line right here, this pin right here, is the five volt reference power coming into that sensor so the sensor can work, okay? Now this other one, the far end here, was the other one that had five volts to it. So we're gonna test that one, same thing. Make sure you're touching on there. And as you can see, there's no light coming from it at all. Okay, so that tells you right here, this one right here is a signal, and this one right here is the five volt reference voltage. Now the last wire or last pin we need to diagnose on here is the center one right here. We figured that out that this should be the reference ground right here. Now this one is going to be able to power that test light up nice and bright. And of course, we're gonna get a ground, we're gonna get a voltage reading on here because we switched over our positive lead over to the positive of the battery cable and our ground, we're gonna use the diagnose decks. We're testing for our ground on here. So first thing we're gonna do is just test it with the multimeter, okay? Right there, 14.5 volts. So that's good, but you want to load test it just like any circuit on the vehicle. So we'll use our test light. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is also going to our positive on our battery. And look at that, nice and bright on there. So we have pulling good amperage through there and it's handling it just fine. Way more amperage than this sensor could ever pull. So we know right now that the inputs from the PCM are coming into the sensor. 
We have good grounds, so the sensor at this point should work. Now the final test, like I said, is to plug this back in, all the way until it clicks, okay? And then we're gonna go over to the scan tool and we're gonna check out a few things on there, including a tap test and a wire harness wiggle test. Now onto the scan tool. What you wanna do is go into your live data stream for PCM. We're gonna bring that up on here. And what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to watch the sensor in question live in real time so we can watch the output of the sensor. So we'll clear all these old PIDs out of here. And you wanna select the fuel tank pressure sensor voltage so we can watch the output in real time, the actual voltage coming out of there. Now for this one right here, everything looks fine. It's 2.65 volts. For a fuel tank pressure sensor, it should be around 2.60. That means it has zero PSI in the tank. So that looks perfectly fine. This, of course, has no problem. This is for demonstration purposes only. What we're gonna do is show you how useful a scan tool can be. So we're watching the live data stream of voltage coming back to the PCM. What you wanna do is go over to the sensor in question and tap on it. Okay, usually with your finger, your thumb, uh, something like that, and see if there's any spikes or dropouts on there. Same thing, connector, move it back and forth a little bit. Harness all the way to the front of the vehicle while you're monitoring it. You wanna wiggle test it, move it around, squeeze it. Squeeze it especially, I found that a lot of problems by squeezing the harnesses. And wiggle test it all the way up. If there's no spikes or dropouts, everything looks just fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna force the signal to the PCM high and low by using the reference voltage and the reference ground built right into the air, okay? So with the key on, engine off, still monitoring the voltage, we're gonna disconnect it, okay? And when you disconnect it, it should go to five volts on there, right around five volts. And that's because, let me get in here and get this disconnected. Ugh, okay. So with disconnected, your live data stream should have gone to about 4.99 volts, okay? That's because the signal line is, has five volts coming to it right here, as we tested earlier, and it's open, so therefore, it's gonna read five volts on there. Now, what you can do, here's a signal line going back. We already figured that out. We know the center one is the reference ground, and this is the reference voltage. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna find it here in a second. Here it is, we're gonna use something like this. And what this is, is this gonna allow us to jumper the reference voltage to the signal, and then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna jumper the reference ground to the signal, and we're gonna monitor the scan tool. So it looks a little something like this. So the far right, sorry about that, the far right is the signal back to the PCM. So this right here is the reference voltage. So if you short these two together, we're gonna force the signal high. So all you gotta do is touch it, okay? And you'll be able to see it go high. It should be at five volts, nothing else. Same thing, we go to the center one here, we're shorting it low, forcing it low. So we're just touching it just a little bit, and it should go down to zero volts, okay? Off, on, off, on. Go back to this one, and just keep retesting them, okay? And the idea here is we're actually testing all three circuits by doing this all the way back to the PCM. So with these tests, you can see the reference voltage and power coming back to here that we verified with the multimeter is actually helping us diagnose the signal line going back to the PCM. Now, if everything is just fine on here, all these tests checked out just fine, you know at this point the sensor has failed. So as you can see here, diagnosing a lot of these sensors and other components on these Ford vehicles can be quite simple if you know exactly how to do it. And that's the whole point of this channel, to help you guys fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time.